Hey guys, and welcome to episode 62 of the Pixel Street Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Connor Cop. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, had a busy week or anything? Uh, not really. Just worked over Memorial Day. Uh, that was pretty lame. However, I did finally beat Days Gone, and I'm pretty excited to oh. talk about that. We will get into that later, though. I am John Hansen. Uh, Joel, once again, was eaten by ravenous gophers on his way to the podcast today, so he will not be joining us. But uh, today, we will be focusing on the Pokemon conference that literally just got done about 20 minutes ago, uh, a possible Death Stranding reveal incoming, and our topic of the week will involve the Burger King French Fry campaign featuring Mr. Potato Head from the late 90s. Uh, that is our topic of the week from Camps262 on Twitter. So, yeah, when we say we are going to cover anything you suggest to us, we mean it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, we've talked about some weird stuff over the past couple of weeks, so keep them coming. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh... As always, you can find the Pixel Street Podcast on most podcast platforms on Fridays, as well as on YouTube. You can now watch the show directly on our Facebook group by searching for Pixel Street Podcast over there. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Pixel Street Pod. Once we hit 100 followers there, we're going to be giving away a free game. Probably about $20 or so, but who knows? Maybe we'll be feeling a little generous. Be sure to share our stuff around and uh, give us some feedback on how we're doing. All right. Let's jump right into releases within the next week. Um, I, I know it it actually released technically today, but Blood and Truth, I know you were talking a lot about last week. Did you get to play that at all yet? No, I haven't, but boy, has the reception been great for that title. Um, people are kind of regarding it as one of the best exclusives to hit the PSVR platform yet, uh, and I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, it actually stems from... Uh, if, if you've played the PlayStation VR Worlds uh, demo disc compilation thing that you could get for the PSVR, uh, there is a, a demo on there called London Heist. It's kind of a sample taster for what that studio was looking to build with Blood and Truth. And this is just the full game realized. So uh, the London Heist demo is fantastic. Absolutely loved it. I can only imagine Blood and Truth is even more so. Uh, super stoked to check that one out. Um yeah, get on the lookout for that one. All right, awesome. Uh, one game I'm kind of cautiously looking at is Void Bastards. Uh, I haven't actually seen anything on it, but as I was scrolling through social media, I saw one site likening it to like a combination of combination of uh, System Shock 2 and Bioshock, so that instantly caught my interest. Uh, I have yet to actually go into it, though, and actually look it up or anything uh, outer wilds is also out on thursday uh that's that game that i think we mentioned it last week that xbox was giving away to a bunch of people watching on mixer at last year's e3 uh besides that there's not a ton uh there's the hollow knight collector's edition coming the ps4 switch and windows pc odd that there's no xbox in there but regardless one that you uh, should uh, be overwhelmingly excited for uh, is Pix Arc? I know how much you love Arc, uh, and so Minecraft version of it will be even better. All right, and that does it for the Pixel Street podcast today, guys. Thanks for watching. I have to go kick Connor's ass. If you can't tell, John really, really <laughs> loves Arc. It's his favorite game of all time. Uh, uh, you should it's definitely so bad. send him clips and recommendations on what he should do in that game. Yes, and then go find a real Tyrannosaurus Rex and get eaten. Uh, Trover Saves the Universe is coming to PC and PS4. That's the game announced last year at E3, at Sony's uh, E3, yeah, I want to say. sounds about right. Yeah, uh, it's the new Justin Roiland game, uh, the Rick and Morty creator, or one of the creators. Uh, looks like Assassin's Creed Odyssey is getting a new DLC, the Fate of Atlantis, Episode 2. I still have to go through that game. I really want to because all I hear is good things. Uh, Persona Q2, New Cinema Labyrinth, is coming to the 3DS. So that's got to be the first 3DS game in months that I've seen. Okay. I don't understand uh, the thinking behind making that game. Uh, let's see. Oh, Journey is coming to PC. That's interesting. I know a lot of people are up on that game. 
Okay, uh, here's another game that I wasn't really expecting to be coming to PC at all, regardless of any other platform, but Octopath Traveler is coming to PC next Friday. That's out of nowhere. I don't remember seeing an announcement for that at all. Um, yeah, it kind of fell under the radar. Uh, people just started kind of seeing stuff about it, uh, rumored, and then all of a sudden there was just a Steam page that went up. I don't even know that the company uh, put out a huge announcement for it. Um just kind of really snuck in there, but I'm pretty stoked for that as the game is pretty good. Yeah, I've heard that. I've definitely wanted to give it a try on my Switch, but I've also been waiting for it to go on sale. Uh, regardless, though, that's cool that it's coming to more areas. Potentially, it could come to PS4 or Xbox One in the future, and I would be really down for that. Okay. Uh, looks like there are no new backwards compatible games. Uh, they're probably saving up all those announcements for E3, so don't expect anything on that next week either. Uh, speaking of next week, though, be sure to tune in to the Pixel Street Podcast, where me, Connor, and Joel will all be giving all of our E3 predictions. It will be all we focus on. No news unless there's something really big out there. No games that we're playing or anything. Just... All E3 predictions, so it should be a good time. Uh, you want to take the free games of the month? Yeah, sure. Uh, so here with Games of Gold, uh, you still have your chance to grab Marooners, uh, the Golf Club 2019, uh, and Comic Jumper. Now, Comic Jumper and Marooners, uh, you can only get to the 31st. You're only going to have a few days left on those. We should be hearing about next month's games here soon. Uh, but Golf Club 2019, you have all the way until June 15th to pick that one up, so... Uh, a little bit of time on there. Uh, as far as Xbox Game Pass, I think a few titles dropped today, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember which ones they are specifically. Um, yeah, of course we didn't put that link in there. <laughs> yeah, of course not, of course not. Uh, we don't uh, while compared. you're looking that up, I will say that uh, by the time that this podcast airs, it will be the 31st, so it will be your last day to grab Marooners or Comic Jumper. And uh, we are recording this a day early on Tuesday, May 28th. Xbox has not announced the next month of free games yet. It, of course, they're going to announce it tomorrow when we're not recording. But regardless, those are your games right now. Grab them while you can. They're free games. Yeah, might as well. Free stuff's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. Have you found that Game Pass yet, or are you still looking? Uh, I found it, and it looks like most of the major stuff launched uh, earlier this month or so. Uh, oh yeah, the so, Lego Batman three and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's looking like we are past all the good stuff. So here's something. I know there was a on new one. one. Regardless, we have to do better about putting in links. <laughs> okay, uh, on PS4 we have Overcooked and What Remains of Edith Finch. Uh, only a few days left on that. We've said it all month. Those are two very good indie games. Definitely give them a try. On Twitch Prime you can get The Little Acre, Whispering Willows. Stealth Bastard Deluxe, which is still an awesome name, the Majesty Collection, and we are going to completely pound this into your face until there is nothing left of it. You can get free 12 months of Nintendo Online with your Twitch Prime account until September 24th. Okay, Connor. Tell me how you finished Days Gone. What What's your feelings on it now? Tell me everything about it. Oh, man. Uh, so this is something that I've been building up to for uh, three, four weeks at this point. Uh, I've been playing a ton of this game. Uh, not really sure why, uh, but it's something that I've been doing. And I finally beat the game uh, today, actually. I, I beat it probably a few hours before we recorded uh, very right. excited about that. Very excited to free up that uh, uh, time slot so that I can actually play some other good games. Um, so something that I've complained about the entire time that I've been playing this game is that it just kind of drags on forever and ever and ever. And there's just so much to do that it's kind of overwhelming at times. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, uh, it was a little frustrating when I beat the game because as soon as you beat it, it gives you more quests to do. Uh, so even though you kind of beat the main storyline, it gives you even more things to do, uh, which normally maybe I wouldn't be so annoyed by, uh, is content's always a great thing. But uh, with this game especially, I was so exhausted and just over the whole experience by the time I hit the end uh, that I really mm -hmm. just didn't want to chug through that content. Um, 
That being said, I'm going to give my final score on the game at a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, I think that's a little higher than I originally gave it. I will say that yeah, the back Yeah, I want to say you better. originally said 6 out of 10. That so sounds about right. It yeah. jumped up a little. Yeah, it um, definitely improved towards the end. The back half of the game was much, much better, more enjoyable. I will say that one of the saving graces for the game is... Uh, towards the end, you start getting better and better weaponry. Uh, like, in the beginning of the game, you start out with just very, very poor uh, kind of guns. Like what you would expect to find just laying around in an apocalypse. You know, nothing special. Uh, but towards the end, you start getting, like, military-grade gear. Uh, like, I have a, a heavy machine gun that has over 100 rounds in the magazine. I've got... Um, uh, uh, shotgun that's an auto shotgun that's got like 10 shots that all shoots uh very very quickly uh desert eagle pistol just some absolutely nonsensical bullshit uh and it's kind of reinvigorated the game a little bit uh to the point where it's much funner to deal with these giant hordes of zombies it's not so uh, painful uh to undertake those tasks because you have landmines and remote bombs and napalm molotovs and all this ridiculous stuff uh it feels a little bit out of place uh when the entire game uh up to that point is kind of spent uh is almost a stealthy survival simulator where you're sneaking around these hordes and stuff and you don't really want to do any direct combat uh but now i'm an absolute badass i've got just stupidly powerful weapons of warfare uh, and i can take down hundreds of zombies at once uh it's pretty cool but it definitely feels weird um overall Game's not that bad, mechanically great, like I've said before. Uh, story certainly not uh, the reason you should be playing it, um, but I'm just glad to be done with it, to be honest with you. Not sure what I'm going to start next, but just glad this one's over. All right, uh, how much time would you say you've put into it? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think PlayStation has a tracker um, for playtime, but if I had to guess, uh, probably 35 hours uh, tops. Okay. Well, you definitely got your money out of it. Yeah, it's one of those games that, you know, if you spend 60 bucks on it, unless you absolutely hate it, you'll definitely get your play worth out of it. Uh, it's not like Rage 2, uh, which is horribly short. Uh, it's a game that you can play for quite some time, and it has some replay value. Um, pretty happy with what I got out of it, but uh, yeah, just glad it's over. All right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely happy to hear that you came out of it enjoying it because uh that first episode where you started talking about it you were really down on it and uh gotta admit that it, that really uh pushed me towards not getting it right away so i'm still waiting on it to go on sale or something i i don't know when i'm gonna get it there's still too much for me to play and not enough time for me to play what i already have but uh definitely something i will try at some point in the future yeah, I think waiting for it to kind of hit some sort of sale or just getting it a little bit cheaper uh, is definitely the key here. Um, not a bad one, but by no means is it fully worth the $60 price tag. All right, all right, gotcha. All right, well, uh, I'll keep mine really short. Uh, I've been playing more Overwatch this week. Uh, same thing as last week. I haven't played any competitive. I've only been playing the Hero Gauntlet mode, which I said last week was the uh gun game like mode that they added to arcade and i really love it it's really fast it, the game takes like five minutes to play uh, most times and i think the i think the timer on it's like maybe six or seven minutes uh just a really fun game to jump in get a few games in get your wins up so you can get some free loot boxes during the anniversary event uh it's just a good time and it's it's not team based or anything so I'm not getting mad at anyone there's a bunch of times where I'm just getting mad at myself for missing out on a kill that someone stole from me at the end uh, that kind of stuff uh, the other game I've been playing is World War Z uh, I've said it once I'll say it again this is my favorite game to come out this year so far I just love the way it's put together uh, oh, I didn't put it in the news but you did mention that there's a free DLC coming out for it yeah, I think June 4th uh, is that first free DLC update. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think those contain uh, some kind of campaign uh, add-ons or so. Um, yeah, we should be hearing that here pretty soon. 
Okay, I am really down for that. I had not heard that. Uh, I am pulling it up here really quick. Uh, developer Saber Interactive have announced that the first wave of significant content updates for the popular co-op zombie survival, uh, survival shooter World War Z will be arriving on PS4, Xbox One, and PC on June 3rd, and the DLC will be free to all current and future players, which is lovely. You are right. Uh, so here they tweeted, Great news, Survivor. Our planned release date for our first big free DLC is June 3rd. This includes the new Tokyo mission, an FOV slider, private lobbies, and a special new zombie, and more. All right, I am down for that. Uh, so there already is a Tokyo campaign, but it's shorter than the other ones. It's only two chapters long, where the other ones are four. So I'm guessing if they're just trying to buff that out or something, like make it a longer experience, I'm not sure on that. I I had, honestly I haven't kept up on the news on the development of this game. Like it came out of nowhere. Like I knew it was coming for a while, but I was like, uh, this game's probably disappointing. But it's surprised the hell out of me, and I really enjoy it. Um, private lobbies is good because right now you can only search with other people. Uh, you can't actually like set up your own lobby or anything uh really curious to see what the new special zombie is because right now they have the uh, lurker which is have you played left for dead yes okay so the lurker is kind of like the hunter except so it will jump out at you and pin you down and like claw at you except this one it doesn't jump as far as the hunter and it specifically hides in dark corners and just out of the way so you'll just be walking around a corner and then it'll just pounce on you uh it, there's been quite a few times where it's surprised me where i just let out a curse i'm like ah fuck something like that yeah it sounds um, like some real shit your pants material there i mean oh it. yeah oh yeah it's awesome uh there's the gas bag which are zombies in hazmat suits that if you shoot them anywhere but in the head uh, their suits start leaking this gas that damages you over time, and it lasts for quite a while, actually. So when you're playing on the harder difficulties, it can really take your team down. Um, the other one is... Uh, it's I can't remember the name of it, but it's kind of like the Charger from Left 4 Dead. It's this bigger zombie, and it's in like riot gear, and it charges at you, and when it grabs you... It just keeps pounding you on the ground, but its front is just completely covered with armor, so you it's either you spend more time shooting it at the front or get behind it and shoot it in the back to kill it faster. Uh, so they've definitely got some interesting zombies already, and I'm I'm down for a new uh, special zombie, so I I have no idea what it could be off the top of my head, maybe like some kind of kamikaze zombie like uh, kind of like uh, the guys from Rainbow Six Siege, the uh, the Suicide Bombers, <laughs> maybe yes. something like that. I, I that's something I could see coming from it. That would be pretty cool. Uh, you should definitely give World War Z a try, though. I love it. Yeah, it's one that it's kind of been on my radar a little bit. And every time I hear you talk about it, I'm just astounded uh, that this is a game that only costs thirty bucks. Uh, I I just can't believe that every time we talk about it, that it's so cheap. I mean. Uh, tons of free DLC on the way. They've got a whole content route map mapped out. Uh, and it sounds like what's there already is a pretty extensive game. You've got multiple campaigns and stuff. Uh, do you think this is a game that could have justified a higher price tag? Um, I would say yes. But I think... So it, if you see it at 30 right now, I think it's on sale. Because I think it originally launched at 40 Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. But, uh, so, when you mentioned that there was new content coming and said, like, there was a new campaign or something, I was like, oh, okay, like, this whole new thing. They're just adding one new episode to the Tokyo mission, which is already short. So, that's something I really don't think they could have charged to begin with. I would really, I haven't seen their content roadmap or anything. I haven't looked it up. Like I said, I've just been, I get into the game and I enjoy it. I haven't really paid attention to the community around it or anything. Um... I could really see them charging for future content coming into the game, like DLC packs and stuff. And I would be completely fine with that. I would buy it. They don't have any other microtransactions or anything in the game. 
So if they were to like sell it at like sixty dollars and then say everything in the future is free, that would have been awesome. But I haven't seen that. Uh, I would have been okay with that just because it's a game I really enjoy. But who knows if I would have even bought it if it was at sixty? Because kind of the thought into it going ahead was like before the game released was why is, is a World War Z coming out in twenty nineteen? Like, when did that movie come out? Like, 2014, 2015? It, like, it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, it's... I, I don't think they could have gotten away, really, with selling it at $60. Knowing what I know now, I would have been okay with it. But That's back true. then, I definitely would not have. All right, so that's all I've got for games I played this week. I spent all of Memorial Weekend with my daughter and didn't really get to play much. Well, unless you want to talk about Pokemon Go. But uh, have you played anything else over the weekend? I haven't touched anything. Currently uh, trying to decide on what I'm going to start up next here. Uh, I have Devil May Cry 5 sitting on my backlog, so uh, that Actually, might be a starter. That's what I should talk about. I finished Devil May Cry 3. Oh, no uh, kidding. Yeah, completely forgot about this. Yeah, I uh, I just ran through and just finished it off, and I really enjoyed it. A uh, really fun game. Uh, it <laughs> I sent you and Joel a couple of clips that I took that the game is just out of nowhere. gets yeah. crazy. Wowzers. Uh, yeah, uh, just the most random stuff happens. Uh, really enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun with it. Uh of the first three, I think three is definitely the best. One is the second best, and two is by far the worst. Uh, there's, it's just not a good game. Uh, but three was a lot of fun, really cheesy and cringy in moments, which is kind of perfect for what I was looking for the game. Uh, I think I do have uh, the spinoff DMC, as well as Devil May Cry four and five downloaded on my Xbox. Uh, some because of Xbox and some because of the guy I game share with. I am going to take a break from them, though. Uh, while I did enjoy playing all three of these games overall within the last few months, I am kind of feeling a little burnout on it. Uh, I don't think it's something that I'm going to run through all six Devil May Cry games in one year. Uh, definitely something I'm... I, I think I want to next focus on the Uncharted games. I want to at least get through the Nathan Drake collection just to say that I've played them at least. So maybe next week I'll talk more about Uncharted like I did last week, but I'm, I'm just happy to have the first three Devil May Cry games out of the way. Uh, definitely something that uh, if you kind of... If you can look at games from like the early 2000s, like those PS2 games, and like enjoy them for what they were, I think it's it's a series you could give a try. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you think when you get to some of the more modern ones as well. Uh, there's quite a bit of contention when it comes to the uh, the next couple in the series, so uh, hopefully we get some more thoughts on that soon. Yeah, personally, I haven't heard much about 4, like, ever, uh, oddly enough. I've heard quite a bit about the spinoff, the, I think it's just called DMC Devil May Cry. Yes. It, it was uh, made by Platinum Games, and I know a lot of people at the time were upset about it, but uh, when I look up videos now and stuff, and it's on lists and stuff now, it uh, it really looks like people look on it, look back on it pretty fondly. So, who knows? Maybe when I get... To, maybe I'll try and get to that one next. I'm not quite sure yet. Like I said, I'm pretty burnt out on Devil May Cry, but I did enjoy it. All right, moving on. Uh, let's get into our news here. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show here, the Pokemon conference just happened about an hour ago now. Um, yesterday on Twitter and Facebook, the Pokemon accounts put out this image saying, hey, you have anything going on tomorrow? Well, now you do, Pokemon conference. So everyone was freaking out. Oh, Sword and Shield stuff coming. Nope, none of that. Although they did announce that on June 5th at... 8 o'clock central time, and 8 in the morning central time, I should say, my time, uh, is a direct completely focused on Sword and Shield. Uh, me and Connor were talking about that a little bit. That really makes us think that there's going to be very little, if none, Pokemon at E3 now, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, with you kind of 
with Nintendo getting this out of the way so soon, especially all this other Pokemon news that came out of the press conference, uh, it kind of makes me pretty excited for their E3 uh, showcase. I think they're going to have a lot of great stuff, but I agree. Uh, probably no Pokemon whatsoever. All right. We'll get further into that next week, though, when we get into our predictions. But uh, definitely something to keep an eye out for and kind of uh, theorize on your own end. Although, for what we did see at the Pokemon conference today, it was... Uh, let's just start out on, like, an overall uh, viewing of it. This was a really weird show, right? Yeah, this kind of came out of nowhere. You know, you don't see Nintendo do a lot of stuff like this. To me, this kind of had a uh, financial meeting feel to it. Um, it was very strange. It was kind of a shareholder meeting. Uh, there was a lot more news in there than I expected, um, but I think more so than that, it was a lot of weird news. Uh, some yeah. very strange announcements coming forward here. Really, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't see at like a video game demonstration, because that's kind of what they were trying to play it off as, you know? Yes. Like a video game presentation thing. Uh, so let's get into this. First off, uh, they brought a guy up saying that he was joining the Pokemon Company uh, board of directors. Okay, I have no idea who you are. He started talking about Godzilla. That was weird. <laughs> um and then uh, they kind of announced a Detective Pikachu game coming to the Nintendo Switch. The guy did mention a different ending from the movie Detective Pikachu, but I didn't. I haven't seen the movie yet, but and I haven't played the 3DS game, so I don't know if it's a remake, a sequel, or a reboot. They weren't really specific on that. They just said. It's coming to the Switch. Uh, stay tuned, pretty much, right? Yeah, looking into some of the uh, post-conference information that came out, uh, after digging into that, it looks to be, uh, and this may not be true, but it looks to be a Detective Pikachu sequel uh, to the 3DS game that had released. Um, I think specifically what they were referring to was uh, that the first game kind of ended on a cliffhanger, uh, and that the next iteration will kind of uh, take that and close the story off in a more meaningful way. That seems to be what most outlets are reporting. Uh, we'll have to see if that is true. Uh, the translation was pretty rough around the whole uh, conference there, so uh, it could be something else entirely, but that seems to be the general held opinion as of right now. Okay. Uh, I do want to point out real quick, though, uh, whenever this Detective Pikachu 2 or whatever it is comes out, uh, we're going to have a lot of Pokemon on the Switch. So at this time last year, there was nothing. Uh, but now we have Pokemon Quest, which we'll actually talk about here in a little bit. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Pikachu and Jigglypuff and all the other Pokemon in Super Smash Brothers. We have Pokemon Sword and Shield coming up, and now Detective Pikachu 2. Plus... Who knows what else could be coming? Maybe like Pokemon or uh, a Game Boy player on the Switch, kind of like the NES thing. Uh, there's a lot of Pokemon on this console already, just out of nowhere. Yeah, it's kind of strange to be honest. It's um, something that kind of blew up uh, seemingly overnight. Um, I totally agree. We we're kind of sitting at a point where there was nothing Pokemon related and it seemed to be very quiet. Uh, I wonder if uh, maybe that's kind of a pivot in direction for them is up until very um, recently, they seem to have a large focus on the 3DS market still. Uh, and mm -hmm. I wonder if that this is just them kind of transitioning to a pure Switch focus is they didn't even talk about the 3DS other than mentioning the Detective Pikachu game that was on there. Yeah, which is... In the end, the best move, because we all want stuff on the Switch. Like, I was mentioning that Persona game coming to the 3DS this week. Uh, it's just out of nowhere, and who's going to play it? Uh, yeah. So, no, I'm, I'm completely down for it. I love Pokemon, and more Pokemon is awesome. I just thought it was interesting that this time last year, we had nothing for nothing, including Pikachu or any Pokemon whatsoever. And now it's filling up quite a bit. Uh, okay, so moving on here. Pokemon Quest was announced for the Chinese market. Uh, apparently, a lot of people are signing into the beta and everything. I that 
was pretty much the big news on that. Uh, I haven't played Pokemon Quest, have you? Nah, you, I, I played like 20 minutes of it. I jumped in and kind of checked it out. It's an interesting little puzzler, but uh, it's certainly not a huge Pokemon experience. Uh, it's a bit of a spin-off. Um, it's interesting. I think this is just a bigger signaling for uh, Nintendo's huge push uh, into the Chinese market here. Um, I think that's really what this is indicative of. Uh, the game itself isn't really great, but I did hear that uh, for the Chinese release, they're adding a ton of features to it, like online play uh, and some other stuff too. So uh, I wonder if that will come to the right. regular version. That's cool. Uh, yeah, they really did want to make a point at the beginning of this conference to like really show their support for like Chinese speakers and everything. Like, I was worried that they were going to spend the whole conference translating everything from Japanese to English, then to Chinese. <laughs> it was a very drawn-out beginning. But uh, it, they really do seem committed to expanding to the Chinese market, which makes sense. I mean, that's, like, the largest population in the world, right? So, obviously, they want to get in there and get that money. But, I don't know. It, you just don't really hear about the Chinese market much with video games besides things getting banned and not allowed there. Uh, moving on, they did show some Pokemon centers. They announced uh, a new one opening up this fall in Singapore, I want to say it was. Uh, and then also a Nintendo store opening up in Japan uh, that will be close friends with it. That that stuff doesn't matter because I'm never going over there. I'll never see it. But they did show kind of like a rendering of what the store will look like. And it looked really awesome. Like they had this giant Mewtwo statue when you first walked in. Which is kind of odd if you think about it. Because if it's Pokemon you think, okay, we're going to have something dedicated to Pikachu. Possibly Eevee here. But nope, Mewtwo. Giant like life-size statue. That thing looked awesome. Uh... Looks like a really cool store. I really want something like that to come over near me so I can just get lost in that store. Yeah, that thing looks friggin' awesome. Uh, it kind of gives me almost a Star Wars-y feel with all the black walls and white accent lighting. Uh, it's just very, very cool, and I'm sad that I'll probably never get to see it in person. Oh, yeah. Uh, after that, they kind of went into this... Uh, the, it's this new service called Pokemon Home... What it is, is it's combining Pokemon Bank from the 3DS, your Pokemon Go, uh, Pokemon from Pokemon Go, duh, as well as your Sword and Shield, Let's Go, Pokemon, and it's just all one big area for trading and stuff. Uh, really cool stuff, really. Uh, I'm glad to see them really making a point to show that, hey, all this stuff that you've caught in the past, it it will c carry with you in the future, especially with like Sword and Shield. And you can take it to Pokemon Go if you want. So uh, I was really excited to see this announcement. Yeah, this is super cool to see. I know a lot of people have been waiting to see if there was going to be any kind of Pokemon Bank implementation on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and they hadn't previously talked about anything like that. Uh, so this is really cool to see, especially with the smartphone integration. Uh, the fact that you can just take your phone with you, trade your Pokemon from there... Uh, to any people that you meet. It kind of feels like an extension of their... Um, oh, man, what was the, the service on the 3DS? Uh, it was like Spot Pass or something like that. Uh, where, oh, yeah. Yeah, just I know walking talking by about. other people, you can get things, and uh, it's just really, really cool. Um, I'd love to see them kind of branching out from just the 3DS or just the Switch and kind of opening up those other avenues. So, uh, seems like a no-brainer, just... Happy to see it happen. Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely awesome stuff. Uh, it is cloud-based and everything. And like Connor said, you pretty much can control everything on your phone, I believe. So that's really awesome. You don't have to have your Switch on you to be trading with people. But you will have had to have them, like, recently connected to the Internet, I'm guessing. Because you're going to have to have that update and everything to know what Pokemon are in your party and everything. Uh not really too sure on everything for that, but it was announced to be coming in early 2020, so it won't be out by the time Sword and Shield release, but expect it in the future. Uh, now to definitely the weirdest announcement in 
the conference. Uh, so they started out with kind of the sizzle reel, like really showing like just how much people have walked using Pokemon Go and everything. And it, it you know, it was kind of cool, just like showing everyone like moving and all the kilometers that people have walked and like, oh yeah, we've made uh, walking and entertainment and everything. And then it ends, and it goes to this guy sleeping in his bed, and there's this weird Pokeball accessory sitting by him, kind of blinking, and then Pikachu gets into the bed with him and sleeps, and voila, Pokemon Sleep is announced. Uh, So it is just a collaboration with this company called Select Button. It's coming next year, and it they didn't really explain how it works, I don't think. But they just kept saying that we're making sleep entertaining, like we're bringing entertainment yeah, they really to a new level with kind sleep. Of repeating that phrase of like sleep uh, being entertaining or like enhancing or enriching your sleep. Uh, they had a whole stick with it, but we didn't get any details whatsoever on what that looks like. So um, yeah, not I have no idea how this is gonna work. Like you just so the. The uh, Pokeball thing that they showed in the trailer, they later on showed to be, it's called the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. <laughs> it's, uh, come on. <laughs> it's uh, it's just like a flattened Pokeball and the, the button on the front just lights up. And they didn't really explain how that works either. Just kind of said, yeah, it's here. We we first started with the Pokemon Go Plus, and then we had the Pokeball Plus. Here's the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, and that was it. So, again, didn't really explain how it works or how you use it or what it does or anything like that, but we know it's coming. Uh, really just weird. Just really weird. You know, honestly, I feel like the strangest thing about this, too, is that this seems to be a standalone experience. This seems to be uh, something by itself. Whereas, uh, looking at the concept, I honestly, if if you had asked me, if you told me about this, I would have never have guessed it was anything more than uh, some kind of Pokemon Go integration or something. Because that makes sense. Uh, where you know, give some kind of extra incentive for sleeping well or something is. You know, Nintendo has always been on their kick of living an active and healthy lifestyle. Uh, yeah. you got the Wii system that tries to kick you off every half hour or so. Uh, and I would have totally expected that. But like I said, this seems to be a standalone experience. And I just, for the life of me, cannot figure out what the hell this is. Um, it's very strange. Very, very strange. Uh, no, I, I'm right there with you. I have absolutely no idea how this is going to work. I For pretty much the good portion of this conference i had i had thought that this was a part of pokemon go because i mean they just kind of integrated it with that trailer like talking about everyone being so active and everything and then they're like showing this thing with this new company making it it was completely out of nowhere and then they go on and just don't explain anything and then the guy from the niantic came out and was like hey yeah snorlax are gonna start appearing because they are in support of pokemon sleep like okay okay that's cute i i like that integration and everything but they told us nothing on this and like yeah. i i just don't know what to think about it it's just weird yeah i think until we get some more information on this this is going to be one of those things that people are really going to speculate over and uh it's going to have some weird theories around and uh, that should be an interesting time, but I maybe they talk about the city three or something. Did they say more details next week? Uh, maybe or or uh, next month. There, there was something that they said was coming. There was more info on it next month. It doesn't really feel like something they would talk about at E three, unless it's like during the big like Nintendo Treehouse event like afterwards you know those big streams where they just go into gameplay and everything kind of like a post show yeah it's kind of like a two-hour post show for them where they just kind of like just they they announce things in there like the uh metroid samus returns 3ds game that was announced in there like it wasn't announced in the nintendo direct uh so i could see maybe something like that appearing in there but i i just don't I don't know if E3 is the right place to show off a mobile game ever, really. Yeah. But a mobile a mobile game that did 
actually makes sense to me that they showed off here is called Pokemon Masters. It's a game that is being made with DNA. Uh, they have worked on previous Nintendo style uh, uh, mobile games. I think they did Super Mario Run, and I think they also had a hand in the Animal Crossing one, but I'm not sure on that one. Uh, Nintendo likes working with them on their mobile games. It's coming sometime. Oh, this is the game that is actually getting more details in June. So maybe this one. Uh, they talk about it E3 during that. Uh, so this one, they really wanted to make a point of seeing trainers that are more famous in the past Pokemon series. Like they showed Blue and Misty and Brock and Red and Cynthia. And it kind of looks like you choose three of these trainers that are really famous in the series and they're like main buddy Pokemon you use to battle other sets of three trainers. So at first I was like really excited. I'm like, oh sweet, is this like a is this like a traditional Pokemon go or a Pokemon game made for the phone? And it looks like it's a bit different. Um kinda was disappointed to see like three at a time battling and I'm like, uh, eh, this isn't like the the more traditional thing that I really want on my phone, but hey, I, I can't really judge it until we see more on it. Uh, they're trying something new with it, so that's cool. What did you think of it? Yeah, I, it's another thing that I just want more information on, to be honest. I think it's it they really lightly touched on this stuff, and so we don't really know what they are, uh, which is kind of a bummer, but I guess that's Nintendo's way of doing things. Uh, the one thing I will say is that from seeing the short video that they had placed on it, uh, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Yokai Watch, um, where you have multiple people on deck and you're kind of swapping between them. Um, should be interesting. I, I don't know. I think uh, it's out this year, sometime this year, they said uh, during 2019 calendar year and uh Hopefully we get some more info on that. You said in June that's the one uh, that's getting announced or revealed. Yeah, that's in June. the one that gets more details in June. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm all for seeing some of our favorite Pokemon trainers come back, and uh, I think it's a smart use of some of those older properties. Uh, but I would just love to know what the hell it is. Right? Yeah. Uh, that was definitely a weird thing. A lot of stuff kind of shown off here, but nothing really went into detail or anything. Uh, so the last announcement is actually something that's been announced before. I've seen it in other places. Uh, Pokemon shirts, which are just custom, like, professional Pokemon shirts that you can buy. Uh, I haven't looked at them myself or anything, but I have heard that they're pretty expensive. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much, but I want to say, like, one shirt is like $30, maybe 40 Uh I would have to actually look it up to be sure on that, so don't take that seriously. But uh, definitely uh, cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I put in our chat that I was like, ah, well, maybe now I'll actually wear some professional shirts. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's cool. Just kind of a little side thing, kind of a weird thing to end this conference on. But, hey, it's there. Yeah, it definitely seemed to be something you would more start a conference off with. Uh, what can you do, though? Yeah, whatever. All right, uh, moving on. Death Stranding is it's kind of hitting some weird. Uh, I don't know what you would call this, like promotional material. I don't know. So uh, earlier this week, uh, Death Stranding's Twitter and Kojima and everyone is started posting like this weird stuff, like help us reconnect and all this stuff with like handprints on a black screen, and within those handprints, you can like kind of see stuff moving in the background uh if you go over to the death stranding or actually i think it's the playstation twitch right now um they're just running this over and over again on there and it says death stranding tomorrow is in your hands and it says it's playing death stranding at the moment for over eight thousand viewers and yeah it's just it's just a black screen and these random handprints just keep showing up on it and you can kind of see like lights and stuff moving in the background. You can't make anything out of it. Uh, just weird. <laughs> uh, this is very Kojima stuff. And uh, 
you know, Kojima's gonna Kojima. Uh, yeah, Death Stranding's pretty weird. I mean, nothing about this game so far has been standard uh, up to this point, so I wouldn't really expect the reveal to be either, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, Kojima always has a penchant for doing things a little different. Uh, the information is going to go up before this uh, podcast goes live. I know we're recording a little early this week, uh, but I'm excited to see what comes out on this. Uh, I haven't really particularly cared for too much of Kojima's work in the past. Uh, just not a huge fan of the Metal Gear Solid stuff. Um, but this one certainly has piqued my curiosity, uh, and I'm interested to see where it goes and what it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, I did also forget to mention that... Uh, this was this started shortly after Kojima Productions revealed that uh, Death Stranding news will be arriving on Wednesday, May 29th. That's tomorrow as we're recording this, but obviously we put this out on Friday, so uh, this is all going to be old news by then. But who knows, maybe we'll actually get a release date, uh, another trailer for it. Maybe we'll actually figure out what this game's about. Who knows? Um, I'm not really... I, I've never played any Metal Gear games, but they don't really look like they're for me. It's not something I've really ever felt like I needed to play. Same. Um, but yeah, for people that are, uh, for people that are really big fans of Kojima and everything, I'm sure they're eating this stuff up. All right, Connor, you want to take the next news? Yeah, sure. Uh, so. Coming up here at E3, small event, you may have heard of it, uh, there is actually a panel on June 11th uh, where you can join the writers and producers of The Simpsons. Um, kind of a cool little thing, and what everybody's wondering is, uh, could we possibly see a new Simpsons game? Uh, I mean, this would definitely seem like the ideal time to talk about it, and uh, I don't know why you would really have these people out there for a panel uh, if you aren't going to uh, at least talk about video game uh, or Simpsons video games. Um, I know there's been a weird resurgence with Simpsons Hit and Run over the past couple of years where everybody's been picking it up and wanting to play it and everything. Um, uh, it's not a weird resurgence, sir. That is a brilliant <laughs> game, okay? I'm going to have to ask you to give it more respect. It came out of left field. It came out of nowhere. Uh, it was such a good game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for that. I've never played a Simpsons game, uh, much less uh, I don't really particularly care for the Simpsons either. Uh, so crucify me if you will, but um, oh, I will. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see what comes out here. Uh, there has to be something. There there has oh, to yeah. be something. Some kind of you, you smartphone figure, game or something. You gotta figure it's some kind of uh, game announcement, even if it is just a mobile game. Hopefully it's not. I, I do kind of hope that we get like a hit and run remaster or a hit and run two. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, as I said, I really enjoyed that game as a kid. It was a lot of fun. Um, we are kind of seeing like Netflix make a presence here as well, showing off games based on their properties as well. If, if this was like anything with the show or anything, they would wait until Comic Con to show off that stuff. This is this has to be video game related for it to be at E3. Otherwise. Why would they come here, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a weird fit for them just to show up and have a random panel. Like you said, I think they fit in perfectly at Comic-Con if they're just talking about the show. Uh, but there has to be some game-related stuff uh, underlying here. Uh, it just doesn't make sense otherwise. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want to take the last news as well? Yeah, sure. So something I'm relatively excited about uh, all of the Call of Duty socials have gone dark. Uh, it is a strange year in that uh, basically we know everything about the new Call of Duty before it's been revealed. Uh, but also they have waited a very long time this year uh, to actually reveal the game. Um, Not only that, we officially know that the Call of Duty in 2020 is Black Ops 5 before we know that <laughs> what the official name of Black, of uh, Call of Duty in 2019 is. Yeah, it's real weird. And honestly, with that news of the 2020 Call of Duty uh, being talked about so heavily in the news cycle, you would really think that Activision wants to get out there and kind of uh, shift the narrative to something else uh, so that we're not kind of talking about weird discourse going on there. Uh, and... 
it's just very strange we haven't heard about it yet, especially when uh, Jason Schreier Kotaku has uh, come out and uh, independently confirmed that the next Call of Duty uh, for this year is Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, with no number or anything, not to be confused with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Uh, I'm sure mm-hmm. that's going to be a fun one to talk about. Um, yeah, this is most likely going to be, a, most likely because it's not official, but most likely going to be a reboot, not a remake, because we already got the HD remake of Call of Duty for Modern Warfare a couple years ago when Infinite Warfare released. Yeah, the the naming scheme just is super off-putting, though. Uh, not to dwell yeah. on that super hard, but uh, the remaster was just called Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. I think they ditched the four for that, so uh, very strange uh, thing here. But yeah, it's weird we haven't heard about this yet, uh, but it looks like with them blacking everything out, we should be hearing about it here pretty soon. The interesting question, though, is where and how? Uh, considering Sony is not at E3 this year, uh, and Activision does not hold their own press conference at E3, and they're not slated so far for anything, um, you know, do they just drop this online and boom, there's the information on Call of Duty? Or uh, do we see a state of play maybe secretly pop up uh, here pretty soon, giving some more information on that? Or, you know, how is this going to be handled? Uh, so there are definitely a lot of different ways this could go. Uh, if you look in the past, let's say last decade or so, uh, Call of Duty games are usually announced before now. It's it's always usually early May, late April, and they have their own event. It doesn't matter if they are partnering with Xbox or PlayStation 4, they have their own event. So I could see just a random stream popping up within the next week before E3 saying, hey, here it is, look for more at E3 and everything. Uh, The other potential is that they go back to showing on the xbox uh stage i don't think so especially with them having a deal with ps4 lately but we have seen that deal kind of get toned down in the past so in the past where we would see like content release on one side and then a month later release on the other right now it's down to only a week for black ops 4 it comes out a week early on ps4 and then a week later it's everywhere so I'm not sure if that deal is like breaking down or anything. That's just kind of me reading into it. But I I could potentially see Xbox just showing off a ton of third-party stuff. Um, besides that, you did mention possibly a state of play. If uh, I don't think there's going to be a state of play around E3. That's just my personal thoughts. If they would, they would hold off on Death Stranding getting more news just tomorrow like that doesn't make sense for them to have Death Stranding have its own thing and not be connected to a Sony state of play to me it doesn't make sense so honestly I think the biggest the most likely scenario is we just see a random Call of Duty stream like maybe next Monday they announce hey it's happening on Wednesday or Thursday something like that yeah I mean We'll just have to be on the lookout for it and see how that pops up. Um, it's just still so weird that we just don't know at this point uh, when we're so close to E3. Because like you said, traditionally, uh, it's revealed uh, about a month or so ahead of E3. And then uh, then we get a, a more detailed offering or showing at the E3 showcases. Um and, and the fact that we already know the name uh, and, and that everything about this game seems to have been leaked or talked about or rumored in some way, shape, or form, uh, I just can't believe we're still waiting at this point. Uh, it kind of makes me wonder why. Uh, maybe there is some underlying reasonings uh, behind why we could be waiting. Uh, maybe I'm reading into that a bit much, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, I think it's definitely... Uh... It's a sound thing to consider now when you're seeing all this like discourse with Sledgehammer and potentially Raven, I'm not sure. Uh, but it there's kind of just a bit of a mix-up going over there right now, I think. Activision is kind of transitioning into something new, I think. Uh, when you definitely look at the games that they're releasing this year, I mean, they published Sekiro, which is a huge game for them. But after that, and Call of Duty, they don't have a lot coming out this year, which is really an odd thing to say um especially with just how much activision loves money 
uh, there's just not a lot for them. Uh, I did see that Spyro is getting a PC port potentially because a Taiwanese board uh, has it rated there, but I can't think of any other like Activision games. Of course, they could be saving everything for E3, but it, it it's just everything that has to do with Activision lately is uh, just seems to be going through a weird transition. Yeah, they seem to be kind of splitting up and uh, finding their place in the industry. Like you said, they just don't seem to have a lot going on anymore aside from Call of Duty. Uh, I know that we did get the Crash Team Racing. Uh, no, sorry, we're getting Crash Team Racing. Oh, that is uh, right. Yep, I did forget about month, that. So um, that'll kind of build on the success that the Crash Insane Trilogy had. Um, but it, it, it's not a huge offering. I mean, uh, especially when you talk about the fact that they have a Call of Duty every single year. Uh, and they do have groundbreaking sales. But uh, for a company as big as Activision, uh, it just seems odd. Uh, to, yeah. to have such few offerings on the table. It's definitely an odd year for them. And and really not just them. If you look at Blizzard, which is a part of Activision, I mean, that whole area, they have Warcraft 3 releasing this year. But other than that, they like haven't announced anything besides Diablo Immortal. So like, just everything to do with that company right now is just just in a really odd place at the moment. Okay, so let's move on to our topic of the show. Uh, this week, as I mentioned before, our topic of the show was suggested to us by Camps262 on Twitter. That's K-A-M-P-S-262 on Twitter. Give him a follow. Tell him thanks for giving us a topic of the show this week. And he wants us to talk about the Burger King French Fry campaign from the late 90s featuring Mr. Potato Head. So, Connor, when were you born? Uh, 95. 95 okay so this these trailers that i linked to in our show notes and everything uh these released in like 99 so i'm not sure if you would have seen them or anything i was born in 92 so i would have been around seven when these first aired and uh i don't remember these at all (laughs) so so the first uh, trailer we have here is kind of like a claymation thing with all these kids at this press conference and this kid's talking about these french fries, new french fries at Burger King. Oh, but we're introducing our first potato ever in the Burger King Kids Club and it's Mr. Potato Head coming in on a skateboard, goes up a ramp, flips, and his mustache goes to his eyebrows. Uh, definitely odd. <laughs> That's uh, but, but that was the 90s. I mean, that's just 90s uh, advertisements, really. Um, Mr. Potato Head is... I, 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 I want to say I remember like Mr. Potato Head toys at Burger King, but I like never ate at Burger King because I've always thought it was disgusting. So I don't <laughs> really remember this too much. But it's, it's just really weird seeing these uh, commercials from way back in the day. You know, I think the weirdest thing about it in its entirety is the fact that uh, Mr. Potato Head is basically promoting cannibalism here. Uh, Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Definitely a a strange little stretch there. Uh, Hey, come to Burger King and hang out with me where you can eat my entire family. Uh, No, he, he's definitely sold out in the biggest way possible. He's getting that money while his kind are being eaten every day and he gets sold as a toy. It's you hate to see it. You hate to see yeah, it. No, yeah, no. The the biggest stars will fall from grace in the weirdest of ways. <laughs> you know, I have to say, Burger King has done some of the weirdest campaigns I've ever seen, and also some of my favorite campaigns uh, is, as far as the weird promotions and stuff they've run over the years. I mean, uh, this is just one in the long line of, of weird stunts and things they've done. You had the, the gold Pokemon cards... Uh, you had the Backstreet Boys CDs you could buy, uh, not to mention the Burger King video games. Uh, yeah, Sneak so, King. <laughs> yeah, whatever uh, the other two were. Um, Big Bumpin' uh, was was one of those. Um, and then there was like a like a scooter racing game, right? Ah, uh, man. Uh, I I don't know. It's been so long. Yeah. You, you know what? Let's look it up. I'm looking it up right now. We're going down this rabbit hole. We need uh, Burger King video games. 
All right, so yeah, there was sneaking, big bumping, and pocket bike racer. So yes. it, it wasn't scooters; it was just tiny bikes. <laughs> hey, rock and roll! You know, whatever gets the All right. around. Oh man. Uh, that was an interesting topic of the show. Uh, be sure to <laughs> suggest more for us on both our Facebook and our Twitter. Uh, we enjoy talking about the randomness in life. But that does it for us in the Pixel Street Podcast, episode 62. I'm John Hansen. You can find me on Twitter at Revic Shadows. You can also find me on YouTube. You could just search Revic Shadows or go to youtube.com slash johnjw92. Uh, expect some E3 videos up for me, or you can just check out the bunch of E3 articles that I've been posting on my Twitter. Connor, where can they find you? I'm on Twitter at the Real Birch. Uh, that's Birch without an I. There's no I in team, so there's no I in me. Uh, I'm also on Mixer. But what if I'm in you? Uh, you're scaring the children. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm also on Mixer on B R C H. That's B R C H for Birch. Uh, you can find me on either of those. And make sure you join us in next week, where we're going to be talking about all of our E3 predictions, uh, talking about some of John's articles. Uh, what we think is going to happen, what's already been leaked and or rumored, uh, and hopefully we get some of your thoughts as well as to what you think might happen. All right, and uh, to finish us off here, Joel is having some leg issues. That's why he's not here today. He did not honestly get eaten by gophers, sadly. Um, Be sure to follow him on Twitter at Campo63, and on Mixer, he is Mr. Finish Line. I believe that's right. Um, if not, check his Twitter. He always posts there about his mixer. If it's uh, not so right, he has to change his name now. It's simple as that. He he, he does. Uh, his legal name, too. Um, but, yeah, that's it for the Pixel Street Podcast. I'm John. That's Connor. Thanks so much for listening to us. Bye. Bye.